Having a baby is an exciting time that often leads to questions. This video will show you the services and facilities that we can provide for you and your family whilst you're having a baby. Welcome to the Conquest Hospital in Hastings. This is a consultant-led unit for high-risk pregnancies with complications. Women with low-risk pregnancies are supported by midwifery-led care in the hospital or at home by the community midwifery team. If you are coming to the Conquest Hospital, please follow the emergency maternity entrance signs. You will find two spaces just outside the labour ward for drop-off and pick-up points. Then car parking is available very close to this area. This is the address of the hospital. It is worth noting it down together with the postcode which can be entered into your sat-nav. The address can also be found on the front of your notes. We advise that you plan your route to the unit and practice it in advance. Make sure that your close family know where to come as well. Remember to keep your car full of petrol as you never know exactly when labour will start. Ambulances should only be called if there is a real emergency. And don't forget that you can always travel to the unit by taxi if you don't wish to drive. Hello Maternity Triage, can I help you? On the front of your notes you will find the phone number for the Maternity Triage. Please ring this number if you have any pregnancy concerns about yourself or your baby. Use this service if you think you are in labour. The baby is not moving as it usually does. Your waters have broken or you have any other worries or concerns. A midwife will answer your call and will advise you about what to do next. Hello, my name's Lisa, how can I help? Um, I've got an appointment for 11 o'clock to have my baby monitored. Okay, if you'd like to take a seat in the waiting room and I'll let everyone know you're here. Thank you. Bye. Hi Jaren, I'm Leanne, I'm one of the maternity support workers here. How have you found the day unit? Do you find it sort of reassuring to come in and, you know, be yeah. checked regularly? Yeah. yeah, really good on, when I came in Friday morning, straight away they showed me where I could get a, tea, a cup of tea and coffee. Lovely. Uh, took me straight to a bed where I was seen within 30 minutes. If your labour is going to be induced, you will be given a date and time to come to the Murray Antenatal Ward at the Conquest Hospital. If this is your first pregnancy and your labour is being induced because you are overdue, you will be offered the opportunity to go home following the insertion of the pessary to induce your labour. You will then be given instructions as to when to return to the Conquest Hospital. If you don't like this option, you can always stay on Murray Antenatal Ward. The process of induction can take a long time, so please do bring magazines or games in with you to while away the time. Partners are able to stay with you, however the facilities are limited and you will be offered a chair to sit in beside your partner's bed. Uh, on Friday morning um, my waters went at half past six in the morning um, and then I phoned um, just to let them know and they said come down and, and, ha and we'll have a look and uh, confirm that they have, <laughs> that they have gone um, and then I came down with my husband um, about sort of seven, half seven um, and they confirmed that they'd gone uh, and then they did, I stayed uh, for an hour or so just um, so that they could monitor uh, baby and just check that everything was all okay and then providing that was fine that I was going to go home and see how things progressed and and everything um, and uh, we got to just uh, we didn't even make it to the entrance because the contractions were coming quite quite thick and fast by that point. We started contracting very early in the morning but very slowly just period pains. I wasn't even sure whether it was kind of the start of anything to be honest. Um, Throughout the day things got a little bit more but nothing and by sort of four or five o'clock it just kind of happened very quickly every five minutes. So I rang the triage number and um, spoke to the lady on the phone who said, you know, to come straight in. We suggest that you pack your bags in preparation for the birth of your baby by 36 weeks of pregnancy. You will need to bring in clothes for yourself to wear in the ward area. 
possibly something to wear in labour. Slippers, dressing gown, pants and maternity pads, toiletries and towels. For your baby, you will need clothes, including vests and a hat, nappies and an outfit to take your baby home in. You will need to take your baby home in a car seat and we suggest that you bring the car seat in when you are ready to take your baby home. If you have specific plans made with your midwife or obstetrician, perhaps due to previous concerns, do tell the midwife during the phone call so that they are aware of this and they can give you the best advice. For everyone's safety and security, the door is kept locked and visitors must ring the buzzer to gain entry. Please be patient if this takes a moment or two to be answered as the staff are busy caring for women and babies. Cleanliness is taken very seriously within the hospital environment. Please ensure that you and your visitors clean your hands with the hand gel provided when entering and leaving the ward. For women, we advise that you wash your hands regularly, especially before and after using the toilet and before eating your meals. labour ward there are nine birthing rooms and a low risk birthing room with a pool, two dedicated theatres and a recovery area should you require an operation. There is easy access to the lagoon behind labour ward for women in early labour to walk around and have a change of scenery. During your visit or stay with us, there's a variety of healthcare professionals that you may come into contact with. I wear lilac and I'm a maternity support worker. We also have a white um, tunic and these ladies um, are our student midwives. Then you have in dark blue, um, one of our trained midwives. Um, you also have doctors who tend to wear um, light blue scrubs. And also we have um, staff nurses that wear um, a dark blue tunic and also our matrons who wear um, a purple tunic. Um, the majority of us as well have lanyards and on our lanyards it will actually tell you what our job role is. You may also see our housekeepers who wear dark blue um, tunics. They also have orange lanyards with housekeeper written on it. Women have often thought about the pain relief that they want to use in labour before they come in and may have put this in a formal way in a birth plan. We can facilitate their wishes with that. We provide them with balls, mats, water. All of this will help them keep mobile um, and get into positions that they want to for labour. We also provide Entonox and that can be mobile or in situ in the room. We can provide them with um, pethidine injections if that's what's required. There are two forms of pain relief available that can only be administered with doctors present on site. These are a diamorphine injection and an epidural. Were you really nervous? Obviously it was your first baby so you didn't know really what to expect. And Yeah, I was very nervous and you, yeah, you don't know what to expect with regards to the pain and how you're going to deal with it. Yeah, how you're going to cope. Um, I managed with just the gas and air. I went into one of the uh, other delivery uh, suites first and tried like the ball and the TENS machine and things like that. TENS machine, I'd not heard of one before, used, used one before, but I think it just sends like electric like pulses very slightly um, when you're having a contraction and just eases the pain. She was delivered in the water um, and again, that was that was really nice because you're in the water and you're weightless effectively. You've got the flexibility to, to be able to try different positions and, and things like that. And I think I tried everything with Lucy. Um, like I said, it was really slow, so I started with gas and air and I just couldn't, couldn't tolerate it. Um, and I went on to try some pethidine, but again, it wasn't really for me. 
and I had an epidural, which for me that time was the most amazing thing. Um, Oliver was speedy as anything, so under six hours came perfect natural delivery, just gas and air. Amazing. Yeah, lovely cup of sweet tea and some jam on toast. Perfect. Fuck on. That's what you need. Becca just put her on my chest straight away, basically, and yeah, she just sat there for a while, and as well, we all took it all in, and that, that was that, really. We weren't rushed at all, because we thought, oh, it's quite late in the evening, so we thought, oh, Martin's going to have to go home, but it was, it was brilliant. He was able to stay. We didn't feel pressured to leave at all. Following the birth of your baby, you will be transferred to the postnatal ward called Frank Shaw Ward. There are four bedded bays here, as well as three single rooms. If the single rooms are empty and you would like some additional privacy, you can pay a small charge for the use of these as an amenity room. I was in a bay with three, three other ladies. Um, it was absolutely fine, curtains, felt quite private. Mm -hmm. um, nice to hear other people actually, I think, when you've kind of just come out of somewhere. Uh, we went into one of the uh, rooms around the corner. Uh, and stayed there for a night, which was like a home from home, really. You sort of left left to your own devices a bit, but you know that the midwives are here if you need it. So it's kind of like the in between stage of you going home. So mm. you're not suddenly you're not just sort of left and abandoned. You know that if you do encounter a problem, then you've got the support there. But you ha you are left to sort of like have your own freedom and your own space. So it was really nice to have that. Breakfast is served from a central trolley point. If you are unable to get to the trolley and need some assistance, please ask one of the members of staff. Your lunch and supper will be brought to your bedside on a tray. There is a special care baby unit beside the postnatal ward for those babies who require special attention or additional monitoring following their birth. Parents can visit their babies on the unit at any time. There is a kitchen with eating area available for parents. In the main reception of the hospital, there is a shop which sells many useful items and gifts for mothers and babies. There is also a cafe serving snacks and hot drinks. The whole site, including the grounds, is designated as a no smoking area and we ask you and your visitors to respect this please. She came out and was delivered and popped on my chest uh, and then she um, latched on within about sort of half an hour of me having her. Um, Lucy was, she was pretty easy to latch on, took a few more days to kind of get that positioning right but he, I don't know whether it's just doing it before or mm. feeling more confident in yourself but it's, he's been no problem at all and it's been the best thing for both of them, mm. definitely. It's the best way to go for baby, I see it as anyway, so, and Danny agrees so. Yeah, and we've been really lucky that both Lucy and Oliver have taken so well to it. The main key that having the support there on the unit yeah. when you're on a ward, so that you don't feel like you're on your own. Um, you know, you, it's. I think everybody thinks that it's going to be a natural experience to breastfeed. Yeah. When really it's quite hard work, and yeah, when definitely. you've just given birth, you do need the extra support there. I'm Naomi Burnside, I'm the Infant Feeding Specialist at East Sussex Healthcare Trust. I work cross-site on both the midwifery unit and at the Conquest Hospital. My main aim here is to help support you in your chosen method of feeding, whether it be breastfeeding or bottle feeding your baby, and to give you all help and support in whatever chosen method you have. So the key thing... So I'm one of the breastfeeding peer supporters. Uh, working at the maternity unit and also at children's centers around the area. We're all volunteers and we've been trained up by the NHS and uh, we've all been breastfeeding moms ourselves, most importantly, that's, that's why we're here. We've been through it. We know how great it can be, how rewarding it is, and we also know how tough it can be sometimes and some of the trials and tribulations that you can go through, especially in the early days. Yeah. Well, we've got drop-in sessions, and you can just come in. We're really happy to be here providing additional support 
for new moms. It's great that there are so many resources available. You've got your midwives, you've got health visitors, there are midwives who specialized in feeding issues as well, and we're really happy to be part of that team, that we can come in and just provide that extra support and lift whenever you might need it. For women who choose to bottle feed their babies, there is a designated milk kitchen. The staff are present to support you with the sterilization of bottles and teats, as well as making up the feeds for your baby. Well, um, all our midwives and maternity sport workers and students are all trained up to um, UNICEF baby friendly initiative standards. So we will all be saying the same things and be able to give you the accurate support and care that you need in your chosen method of feeding. I also run monthly infant feeding workshops which are cross site. They are at Eastbourne Midwifery Unit and at the Conquest Hospital uh, where you can learn more about infant feeding, breastfeeding and relationship building. When you and your baby are ready to go home, your care will be transferred to your community midwife. She will visit you at home or see you in the postnatal clinics. We will also give you contact numbers. If you have any worries or concerns, please do not hesitate to call us. We hope that you have found this video useful and it has answered your questions. If you would like any further information, please do not hesitate to contact your community midwife.